بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم In the third and final session we're going to look at why you probably would benefit from having a marriage agreement and what are some of the key things to include in such an agreement um, Now marriage agreements are not strictly speaking required It would make sense before marriage to, for the two parties to agree on the things that are of significance to them. Now, if, if societies are stable, then there is great wisdom in their being, social, cultural, and other types of norms. Because norms give us facilitative de uh, defaults by which to act. And defaults are very useful for human beings. Because you don't have to think about it. You don't have to think about it. You just do what other people are doing. And a lot of stuff is facilitated. And that's why different societies at different times come to norms. Now, we are not bound by those norms. We're not bound by their norms. If your family only marries... From your own clan, that's a familial norm, but you're not bound by that. You're not bound. We talked about that earlier. I have a friend who calculated there's only two women who, in his family, he was considered eligible to marry. Because their family had juts and butts, B-U-T-T's. And their family thing was, you must marry a jut and no one but, B-U-T-T. But amongst the buts, there's other criteria. She has to be younger than you. She has to have similar but lesser economic status than you. She has to be this, that. So ultimately, there's only two women in the family he could have married. And one was already married. There's only one person that he was eligible to marry. That's nothing religious. That's nothing religious. Right? And religion has come to free us from these kinds of bounds. There is a great role for culture and cultural norms, for society and social norms. These are beautiful things. Is there an Islamic expectation that you open the door for somebody? No. But this is a good social norm. Right? There's other social norms that, that are good. Like, will you go to hell for putting your elbow on the table while eating? No. But we uphold the social, but you're not bound by it. You've got a bad back and you're leaning ahead to eat. Okay. And you can't hold it against someone for doing something like that. So in marriage agreements, the reason marriage agreements are important is that the key aim of Islamic teachings is the preservation of good, worldly and religious, and the prevention of harm. And marriage in our times has varying expectations. And there's what, what one can call civilizational flux. Whether we are in immigrant communities of people whose parents or grandparents or great-grandparents migrated to the countries we're living in, but also in Muslim societies due to still living through PCSD, post-colonial stress disorder, and all kinds of external influences. Okay. Um, so, in that, you know, as we you know what we quoted from Raghib al Isfahani on the importance of agreements that 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 contracts and agreements aren't needed in the presence of love. But if when love is threatened, nothing re restores love like agreements. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul